Hi everybody, it's Tim with Engadget, and this is the new Nexus 10 from Google and Samsung. It's the 10-inch follow-up to the Nexus 7, which was, of course, from Asus, the low-cost tablet that blew our minds this summer. Now we're stepping up to the 10-inch tablet, and again, this is Google trying to establish itself and establish a benchmark for the 10-inch tablet space that it can give developers to develop their apps against in the hopes of driving more apps into the Google and Android ecosystem. This is a Samsung-powered device with a dual-core 1.7 gigahertz processor. 2 gigs of RAM and 16 or 32 gigs of storage starting at just $400. But the real talking point is that display up front it has a whopping 2560 by 1600 resolution display. That's the same as the new Retina 13 inch Mac, but in a 10.1 inch package with a whopping pixel density of 300 ppi. The resolution and the clarity, of course, are very impressive. The colors and brightness are too, but we did find the contrast to be a little bit lacking, and we also noticed some leakage from the side of the screen, something that we verified on a second unit. So it's not quite the same level of overall quality as the Retina, but overall it's a very impressive device, and with this high resolution you get a lot of content. The tablet has a very distinctive looking design. It's got a bit of a throwback to the Nexus 7 on the back with this rubbery dimpled inset that's very similar to the backing of the Nexus 7 tablet, but otherwise it actually looks a bit more like the Galaxy Tab 10.1 N. That was the second revision of the Galaxy Tab 10.1 Samsung created to make it look less like an iPad. And indeed this looks nothing at all like an iPad, so lawyers, go ahead and put those briefcases away. It's got dual front-facing stereo speakers, which actually sound pretty good for a tablet, helped of course by the fact that they're not on the back, and they're actually pointing sound toward you. We've got a volume rocker and power button, micro HDMI output, micro USB input, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well. Around back there's a 5 megapixel camera, and on the front a 1.9 megapixel camera, neither of which we can say we were very impressed with. You'll be using that back camera to take advantage of one of the new features of Android 4.2, which is shipping on this device, still called Jelly Bean by the way. It has two new panorama modes, presumably in response to the panorama mode added with the iPhone 5 to iOS 6. With the first you can sweep the device from left to right and it will capture pictures along the way and then stitch them together. The second is a little bit more adventurous allowing you to take full 360 degree images of where you're standing and then view them as if you were standing there before. Unfortunately we found the stitching in both of these modes to be a little bit lackluster particularly that 360 degree mode. The stitching is very obvious and ultimately the pictures themselves didn't look very good and unfortunately once they're taken you cannot replace them within the panorama. So while this is kind of a fun novelty the resulting images simply don't look that good. Another major improvement is a new keyboard which allows swiping gestures much like the aftermarket swipe keyboard. It works pretty well and the prediction is quite good but ultimately we found ourselves preferring the original swipe much more or third-party alternatives like SwiftKey. Given the Nexus 10 is launching so quickly after the fourth generation iPad, we thought we'd go ahead and put it back to back and see how the two perform relative to each other in a very common task, and that is, of course, web surfing. In loading and rendering web pages, it was often neck and neck between the two, sometimes with the iPad showing content first, but the Nexus 10 rendering the complete page more quickly. Ultimately, there was very little difference between the two, although we did notice that pinch zooming and scrolling was a little bit more smooth on the iPad than the Nexus 10, but ultimately it's not a major difference and certainly not one that you're likely to notice unless you sit the two side by side as we did here. Ultimately, we're quite impressed by the Nexus 10. It's not quite the knockout tablet that the 7-incher was at $200, but a 400 is quite a value for a 10-inch device with such an amazingly high-resolution display. That said, the display isn't quite as good as the Retina display in the latest IMAX. The colors and contrast are definitely brighter on the Apple products, but at this price, we're not complaining. Again, that's $400 for the 16GB version, $500 for the 32GB version. For either, that's a great price, and if you're looking for a 10-inch Android device, this is a very good place to start. Again, this is the Nexus 10 from Google and Samsung.